Hello, welcome to this late morning here. Could be nighttime where you're watching. Taste challenge. We have two Bushmills Irish whiskeys, blended whiskeys in the mix. And uh, I noticed just this very morning when I went on there early, it was showing the regular lineup. When I went on there just now, it was showing a new product. They just started featuring it. They redid their website too, where you can click on the whiskey now and it'll come up the right click and start a new tab. That was a flaw. But they're showing a new one called Bushmills. Uh, what is it called? Special cask. You can look there. I'll put the link. It's age 28 years. That means they started working on that project in 1992, right? Older than some of the viewers. Some of the viewers are under 28 years old. So they started working on this special cask in 1992. It's aged 28 years, 17 years in one type of cask and uh, uh, nine years in another. Let's look real fast. So Bushmills, the blends, the white, the black, the red, the malts, the 10, the 16, the one. And now this new one, and this is not all they make. This is what they're showing. The rare cask. That's right. I said special. The rare cask, purple, net, purple, uh, label purple neck the rare cast number one that means there's more coming so we got the silver cap i'm sorry the gold cap the black cap the red cap the green cap the burgundy cap and the uh gray cap smoked charcoal gray cap right so the rare cask it says um i posted that in alcohol legs if you want to see it 28 years in a cognac cask so it says uh, release in small qu quant quantities within the U.S. So that means it's for United States of America sales only. I'll check it out at Total Wine, but it's probably in a price that's beyond what I'm willing to pay. Uh, extreme. Okay, they go on and on about their whiskey making experience, but extremely rare small quality whiskey is re rested in hand selected ex bourbon and sherry casks barrels. 11 years yeah, that's typical I said 9 huh, right? 9 and 17 is 26 11 sorry <clears throat> um, and then finished in cognac cast for 17 years <laughs> finished for 17 years that's a long finish huh yikes but we have black and red all right Black Bush, Red Bush, Black Bush introduced from what I could find. Their website is not totally helpful. 1980, because I found they, they applied for a, cop, a trademark um, protection in 1980. And I saw no old ads referring to Black Bush. It was it was 38, uh, $35.08 after tax, $35.08 after tax. Now, Jack Reed in Northern Ireland was saying about the ads, too many ads coming up. I can't control that. Uh, really, I don't like it. Should be one pop up, you know, but I, I don't know what to say about that. Could talk to me off air. I might have a solution. OK, uh, cork, real cork cap, not rubber. Age. Now, they're both 80 proof. All right. So they're mild on the ABV, mild 80 proof. But this one's aged eight years, which is a year less than the original Bushmills used to be aged. The original used to be aged nine, nine, nine. What happened? Why did they drop it to five? I don't know. Cutting corners. Nothing new because a lot of these mainline, mainline liquors have dropped down. Hey, you know, Jack Daniels in the 70s was 90 proof. Cuddy Sark, 86.6 .6 proof. Um, it goes on and on. My friend David's always ranting and raving. They've watered everything down. It's all watered down. I hate, I hate it. I said, look, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. I can't control that. You know, if it's watered down, you know, it's watered down. Oh, Red bush. <laughs> Didn't check the label. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go rinse this out. I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. He's going to be hard to tell. It. Thank you, Schlitz, for this shirt. 
in the cap. Well, I bought the cap. They sent me the shirt, but I bought the cap. All right. Um, <clears throat> Honestly, I was thirsty for, thirsty for water anyway. I think some of this, like Jack Reed was talking about, has to do with the browser you're using. Like it, some of these browsers, like ads will pop up constantly all all day long. And then other browsers, you may not get an ad once, maybe. All right. So anyway, um, water. <laughs> Ooh. Already walked a mile. I'm going to walk a half a mile. All right. So this is the Red Bush, the Red Label, introduced in nine in 2017. I said 19. 2017. Yeah, it's uh, got a lot of positive uh, feedback on it. The sales seem to be all right. A Walmart's got it. 20, 22 dollars, 23 dollars a bottle. But my famous friend david who is a whiskey not the whiskey scout but a whiskey scout he was out there at savannah discount he's alerting me like frantic in a way they got it for 9.99 you know i don't know much about bushmills at the time three months ago i'm like what what are you talking about i'm thinking it's a mini bottle no regular size bottle ten dollars ten dollars i said get it I'll pay you back. So it came out to 11 bucks, even after tax, of course. So, but uh, $9.99 plus tax. Yeah, that's like way cheaper because it's $22.99 at Walmart, $23.99 at Total Wine or vice versa. But it's about the same price. So uh, I got it for $9.99. I don't think you're going to find that. I hope you do. The Black Bush. Now, nah. hey, ain't nobody got it cheap. I got it at Walmart for $31.99 plus tax. Like I say, it came up to $35.08. I mean, you could search around. You might save a dollar. You're going to spend $5 worth of your time to save a dollar, though. I mean, Total Wine and More in Metairie, Louisiana, on Veterans Boulevard, formerly Veterans Highway. They had it for a, a, a $0.75 cents cheaper. I mean, I'm not going through all that to save $0.75. Cents. What I like to try the other Bush Mills brands but yeah based on my experience which is it? the original really good the black bush really good the red bush really good three out of three really good yeah okay i'll keep trying them buying them now um but i'm afraid it's not going to be 30 dollars, 31 32 dollars or less when we get into the single malts <laughs> it's going to be some money. We we talking about 10 year age, 16 year age and 21 year aged. And then this, this uh, rare cast 28 year age. I'm going to look it up on total wine. Let's see. They might, they might've configured it that they might've told total wine. Don't release it till October 1st or, you know, whatever. All right, let's see. Instant. Toto, wait, okay, let's see, WWW, Toto, oh, here we go, uh, Matherns doesn't sell Bushmills, so, but didn't I see the Sexton over there, that's a Bushmill specialty brand, but let's see, Bushmills, Bushmills, Northern Ireland whiskey, Ulster whiskey, my friend David said, that's Protestant whiskey, I said, yeah, I'm just looking to review them. You know, I'm not into all the politics of it. I pay attention to politics. Obviously, I do videos on it and all, but I, I'm i sorry Ireland has these problems. You know, I didn't create the problems. I don't know any really about it. I, I, I know much about I do know much about it. I don't know much about it as far as a personal experience. I met some guy at a hotel once and he was like, I'm from Northern Ireland and he didn't want to talk about it. <laughs> Except he said, if something's bad or nasty tasting, he says it's bogan. I think he said that. We say it's bogan. I said, bogan? Yeah, it means like it's no good. I think that's what he said. Okay, single malt 21 year. 229.99. Ay, ay, ay. 
<laughs> well, this is what they're showing on their website. I'm looking right here. The original's $24.99. A dollar cheaper at Walmart. The red bush, $23.99. I think that's the exact same price at Walmart. The black bush, $30.99. Like I said, Walmart was 75 cents cheaper, uh, more expensive. Then they got the big jug bottles, glass though, not plastic. Original 44, 44, 49, that's better per ounce. I, I just didn't want that much. The red bush, 47.99. And, and the single malt, 21 year, 229.99. Yeah. Oh man, people were giving me heat for buying the uh, Johnny Walker Blue Label for two forty two after tax. Like, why are you paying that much? You know, on and on. I was like, well, I said, I mean, I don't just want to buy cheap stuff all the time. I'm not going to go pay two hundred dollars a bottle for a whiskey every day, you know. But um, it is kind of fun to buy something really great. And then I noticed most of the people doing reviews of Johnny Walker Blue were doing these little mini bottles. You know, they weren't doing the full 750. A few were, like maybe 10. The other 40 people were doing the little tiny, which I almost bought. But then I calculated it, and I was like, why would I buy that? Because if you bring it up to 750 per ounce, it's like $500 per 750. I said, that's no value, and people are paying $30 a shot at a bar to try Johnny Walker Red, a uh, uh, Blue. I read, right? I said, nah, I'm just going to go for broke. I'm buying the whole bottle, man. And I did, and I'm not regretting it. And I, and I would theoretically buy the Bushmills. I would buy the <clears throat> Cuddy Sark, that $250 bottle, the black bottle. I don't know what it is. It's not on the website, but that's nothing unusual. Um, Eagle Rare. <laughs> I don't know about that one. That's like, uh, da, da, da. all right. Anyway, so yeah, same story. The red bush is gold, and, and the black bush is darker. Uh, if I glance down, is it going to give it away? Um, I don't think they're that different. I don't think a glance is going to give it away. It's not like some of these whiskeys where one is just nearly brown, like people say brown liquor, like literally brown, and then some are just like pale straw. Well, yeah, you can't glance. You got, you gave it away. But I'm going to try to be fair, you know, do a good evaluation. Which, which one am I going to prefer? I don't know because I got pretty shook up this morning at dawn, 5.45 a.m., and I did red, the, the original, the white label, or formerly known as Old Bushmills. Just look at the old ads. I put them on alcohol eggs, Old Bushmills. Well, they changed it to Bushmills from the distillery called the Old Bushmills Distillery. And uh, <laughs> you wouldn't think these things would slosh, right? They're pretty big glasses, but you're sloshing. <laughs> um, I did that against the black and I got it confused. I couldn't get over it. The sad thing about that video was that in the middle of the transmission, it went bad. In other words, I got an alert on Google Hangouts, YouTube saying, your transmission was interrupted, your broadcast, uh, be patient, we'll try to bring it back. And then people were commenting, dead, it's dead, it's not broadcasting. So I went and shut it down and I watched it, the playback, and yeah, it stopped at 17 something minutes, even though it was saying it was 20 something minutes. And I was like, forget that. I don't like posting stuff like that. So I did a follow-up video just summarizing what happened in the previous one. And it's kind of shocking. It was shocking because in the Dawn Busters Taste Challenge, I did... I was saying how one was so bready. It was like white bread dough. I was saying, there's your single malt, there's your single malt, right? So then um, 
The other one seemed to have like a grating, a little bit of harsh grain alcohol. And I said, that's your original Bushmills 50-50 blend. I don't know the blend ratio on the red. They don't give, they don't say it. So um, and I'm not going to guess anymore because I was so off on the original. So um, then I did the reveal and I was like, oh, it's the original, not the black. Shocked. Now, in my defense, do I have a lot of experience with Bushmills? No, I do not. So <clears throat> you could say, well, you don't know much about those. You're tasting them new. They're all full bottles, so you don't know. Okay, good. But still, the Black Bush is 30, $32 a bottle, and the red, the white is 24 and I should be able to tell $8 difference, but I couldn't. So I'm going to try to do this right, see what happens. Beer Hound, top of the morning to you. He's in Orange County, California. Top of the morning to you. Angelo Tirado says, what's the oldest you can age a whiskey and it still tastes fine? This I do not know. Apparently very old. Like, remember a few years ago in the news, 10 years ago, they said uh, somebody had found a brandy, French brandy from like 1807 during the days of Napoleon. It had never been opened. And um, they sold the bottle for like a million dollars, something the most expensive liquor ever sold. Balvini has a 50-year-old, but I don't have the $32,000 to buy it, says Drayton Sawyer. Yeah, right. Right. Even if you had the $32,000, would you want to spend it on a bottle of liquor? I wouldn't. Damn, Angela. <laughs> Angel Tirado says, damn. All right. Now, so I'll give these a little bit more stir. I try not to slosh them this time. And uh, I'll try to see. Now, after today, Irish whiskey is going away. Bye-bye for months, months. And we're going to do uh, scotch. I have blended scotch, John Barr, which actually did better than I thought. I thought, eh, that's cheap. $23 a bottle ain't going to be that good. Wrong. It was $15.65 in my case. I got it for so much cheaper at Mathern's. And I said to the manager, I said, why you sold it so cheap? I mean, uh, you were... Well, he said, well, actually, I thought he got some kind of deal with the di distributor. He said, no, I never actually, he said, I never sold a single bottle in all these years we had it. Like never, he checked his record, six bottles. I guess I get a case, six bottles. He said, I never sold a single bottle. So I just sold it for cost just to get it out off the shelves. I said, that's amazing. Total Wine still has John Barr for 23. Other liquor stores around here have it for the same price. So I figured, what the heck? It's been, been the label says 1881. I don't really think it's that old, but they claim, you know, but whatever. Uh, it was better than I thought. So I'm going to put that up against all the other scotches I have and um, to my blended. Then I got a single malt showdown with Tomatin, Dualcus, the legacy, the Tomatin Dualcus. Versus Glen Murray, Elgin Classic. I would expect that to be a, a, a draw. Price was the same, more or less. I, I think it'll be a draw, but I, I don't know. And then I bought another single malt for a few months down the road, and it's called uh, Glen Livet, the Glen Livet. Founders Reserve, Glenn Levitt, Founders Reserve. So we'll see what. Looking forward to the Scotch reviews. Me too. So the Glenn Levitt, Founders Reserve. Hopefully, it won't be too many months for that. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Then I'm going to go eat some food. Oh, look at those fruit trees. They're full of fruit. They're just loaded. One of them sagging. It's got so many oranges on it. <laughs> I don't like fruit, but. Uh, well, you could fill hundreds, I think, just, it's it's hundreds of bags. I don't know, it's crazy. And then she got fruit trees down the street. Woo! Is Jack Daniels a good whiskey to start off with? I think so. Been, been looking into getting a Scottish whiskey or Irish one, but that they're pretty expensive. Well, no, they're not that expensive, actually. Um. 
Jack Daniels is a good mainline American whiskey. If you go to places like CVS, Winn-Dixie, Walmart, even, even Walmart, but more even better, Winn-Dixie and CVS Pharmacy, they got Scotch whiskey for cheap. Now, these are brands ain't nobody ever heard of. They're minimum three year aged. I mean, they're just basic 80 percent grain spirits, more than likely. But uh, it's a good place to start. And then you can climb the ladder, you see. So I don't think you're not. And then you're not out much money. You buy the big plastic jug bottle. You had not lost much. So, uh, yeah, I'd recommend that. And then you can, like I did, climb the ladder. Go to Albertsons. They have really cheap scotch. Joe Biden's dentures. Oh, look who's back. I'm stocking up on spam and beer in preparation for the coming chaos in November. Yeah, right. All right. Time to get on this. Um, I just like tasting these whiskeys, rums, and brandies. I'm not really into drinking them so much. Um, well, honestly, I never drink them at all. <laughs> I just do taste challenges and reviews. I never drink them. I never come home from work and say, I'm going to drink some whiskey. I just don't do it. And you say, well, millions of Americans do it. They make cocktails every night. What's wrong with you? Nothing's wrong with me. I just don't do it. I drink beer. All right. Oh, it smells like, um, what does it smell like? Grain, cereal grain, duh. It's made from cereal grain. There's a little white bread dough. It's mild, it's pleasant. I mean, this is nothing strong or harsh. People say Irish whiskey is bland, it's dull which would appeal to many people though, you see. You know, Irish whiskey is one of the fastest growing whiskey segments. A lot of people like mild and mellow, mild and mellow. They don't all like super strong and intense. Go to Taco Bell, do you know mild sauce is one of their big sauces? You can say, I'm passing judgment on those people. How dare they buy tacos and use mild sauce? I don't know how dare they do it. They just do it. That's what they want to eat. What are your thoughts on Yingling selling out to Molson Coors? Well, they haven't sold out yet, Craft Beer Tastic, but I'm sure that's coming, right? Look what happened this morning. I got an alert on Facebook. Anheuser-Busch InBev announced they have totally bought out the Craft Brewer Alliance. They may as well buy it out. They've been having a controlling interest in it since about 2000. No, what am I saying? 1988. <laughs> that long ago, like... They kind of like controlled it already by having them. They, they were the, they didn't have a majority ownership, but they were the biggest stockholder. So they had like 32 percent of the company. So Widmer Brothers, Red Hook. Now, maybe they'll do something with it because those, those brands have been languishing for years and they make really good beers like Red Hook, ESB. So. Oh, yeah. Yingling, I don't mind. I mean, the man is old. His daughters own it now. They Maybe they don't get along with each other. Maybe they can't agree on what to do with the company. It's a big risk. Uh, so they probably don't have the money to really expand distribution across the USA. So Mil Molson Coors probably said, we can do it. So let us get our foot in the door. <laughs> Some viewers will say, you mean their claws on them? Yeah, well. Leave the spirits for special occasions like New Year's and whatnot. After a hard day of work, the best thing is a beer. I agree. But I usually drink on weekends if at all. Okay. Big beer, you will be assimilated. All right. Good morning. Let's get back to the good to the gold standard. Whatever the gold standard is, DBD. Okay, more honey here. More honey. <laughs> More uh, oak barrel, more bourbon. Okay. Kona Brewing is all I see from the Alliance, says Jeep and Foodie Caleb. Well, that's a good point. That's all I see, and I barely see that. When's the last time I seen Red Hook? Been a long time. Oh, I might find a bottle that's a year old, covered with dust. Uh... Widmer Brothers, long time. So like I say, maybe they can pump some life into it. 
Smells fruity and fresh. I mean, they, they both smell really good. It's like, I did not overspend on this. No way. No way, Joseph. <laughs> okay, taste. Well, it's real caramel and honey and, 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 and sweet corn. You say, you mean like whiskey? Yeah, I like that. A little bread dough. It tastes kind of like, I don't know. That's what it tastes like. I don't know. Haven't seen Red Hook in years. See what I'm talking about? The last Red Hook beer I had was the one with Chris Berman. Chris Berman. Yeah. Didn't they make one with um, that other guy who got kind of moved off of ESPN and he did his own show? <sighs> Dan Patrick. At first, I thought that ale was really bland. I said, this ale is bland like the Dan Patrick show. Then I started drinking on it. had this Argyle socks label and I said, no, it's really good. It's just demure. Accumulation ale, right? Wasn't it? Acu no, not accumulation. Acc approximation. I don't know what it was. Who? You know what I'm talking about. I'm thinking about it like it was five years ago or three years ago. It was like probably 2013 when I did it. <laughs> ah, seven years ago. But that thing was good. What was the name of that stuff? Um, this is more honey. All right, bottom line. Are these real different one from another? Profoundly different. Uh, I wouldn't say so. It's got a little kind of ragged alcohol, grain alcohol burn, but it's not profound. Like if you want to get a whiskey that's got a, like a real harsh grain alcohol burn, go to your local store and get something like, uh, mm, I don't know, like Heaven Hill, Quality House Kentucky Blended Whiskey or um, Samuel, T.W. Samuels also from Heaven Hill, or um, oh, some of those harsh scotches like um, Inverhouse, Green Plaid, that thing's pretty grainy and bitey. Or uh, if you go to Albertsons, go get Piper Dean. Uh, although, uh, although I think Piper Dean has a little more single malt flavor. I think your Red Hook accumulation ale video was one of your most hilarious videos. I can't remember what tangent you went off on, but it was fun to watch. That was years ago. Oh, it was accumulation. That was the one. That's what it was. Accumulation. <laughs> I don't know. I just go off on these like sidebars because I just think of something. And if I don't mention it, I'll forget about it later. So I just remember the label reminded me of Argyle socks. Like you would see at uh, North Carolina University of North Carolina. Like we're in the fraternity, you know, we're in the machine and we run everything. We're in a secret society of young 21-year-old frat boys. Kind of like, and that's kind of like the Dan Patrick show, the vibe I get from that. Is that still on the air? I don't go on long road trips anymore. I used to listen to that. And then I used to listen to that show all the time on long road trips about the clones. Hello, clones. Jim Rome. <laughs> um he screwed up in, what, 1996? He tried to play games with uh, Jim Everett. Jim Everett about to bust his tail on the air. That was good for him. It might have been staged, but I don't believe it. Jim Everett said, call me Chris again. Call me Chris Everett again. He, he did it, and he grabbed him and threw him across the table, and he was scared. Jim Rome was like, oh, I, was, I was just joking. I was like, yeah, he was joking to you. You got your issue.
you, you got checked on live TV. Jim Everett was like, I got a wife and a child. I'm a man. I play. I'm, I'm a man. I'm 40. You know, he was probably like 36 then. I played pro football. You're not going to uh, make fun of me. <laughs> that was funny. He deserved it too. But anyway, back to this. There's uh, Caleb talking about tangents. <laughs> um, Uh, $10 difference? Well, it's more like $8. I don't know about that. I think you might just go with the red bush. It's age only four years as opposed to eight, but I, I don't think you're losing too much. Four years, age, eight years, age. Aged in Oloroso sherry barrels, aged in first fill bourbon barrels. Same proof. Now, you might be like me and say, oh, that's all gimmicks anyway. Changing the barrels, that's just to entrap people into buying new bottles. It doesn't really change the taste that much. I kind of go along with that. <laughs> I buy into that, but I didn't, then I go and buy them, right? I say it's a, as, I say it's a gimmick, then I buy it. Yeah, there's differences, but they're not appreciable. You, you understand what I'm saying? They're not like profound. There are differences. Now, you might say, hey, I have a job. I have a house note. I have a car note. I mean, I have all these expenses. I can't be running around buying eight, nine dollar per bottle more each time. Give me the value. Give me the value. OK, I'll give you the value. I think the value is the red bush. I think it's, it's a better price. It's it's younger by half. You know, four years age versus eight. But it's cheaper and you're not losing much. It's a good trade off. You pay a lot less and you get only a tiny bit less. Now, is that a denigration against the black bush? Am I saying the black bush is a rip off and don't buy it? No, I'm not saying that. I'm because, first of all, I don't have a lot of experience with it. There's probably notes I'm not picking up. If you watch these videos that are kind of like produced by the Bushmills people, although they claim, you know, the video is like, oh, some beer, I mean, some whiskey guy is interviewing their uh, brand representative. But they're probably not going to put it out there where the guy's going to come at them, you know. So do they ever put me on there? No. I had uh, Paul Honor people telling me, yeah, we're going to get you to talk to our Paul Leonard, USA president, but it never happened. I just think it ain't going to happen because I'm going to ask pertinent questions. I'm not going to be all like fanboy or, oh yeah. I mean, I'll be like that, but then I, I think there's a risk that I'll ask questions like, you know, the kind of questions I ask that's going to put people on defensive and they're not going on there to, to like really argue it out and hash it out. They're going on there to, to promote the brand. I mean, if I owned a liquor company, I wouldn't put me on my video. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wouldn't do it because it's too risky. I know me. I'm like thinking about if I would schedule me on it. I wouldn't do it. Unless I was like trying to be totally honest and didn't worry about sales and perception and all of that. I might do it then. But um, I don't think too many are going to go out there with that. Nah. I mean, Polano, they'll send me the beer because they know I like it. I've already said in videos eight years ago. Oh man, this stuff's great. Tastes great. Havana's great. You know? So like I told the lady years ago, I said, I'm not just going to say it's awesome because you sent it. She said, yeah, but you already said it was an A minus. What does that mean? They already watched the video, right? Same thing New Belgium told me. You already said it was an A minus. They check people out. Am I going to get anything from Bushmills? No. Am I going to ask for anything? Obviously not. Would I take it if they sent it? Yeah, of course I'd take it, but they ain't going to send it, so I'm not worrying about it. Um, I have money. I can buy it. I mean, I'm not poor. 
I did buy these. I bought them all. I bought every liquor brand I've got. Except for the uh, Heaven Hill. No. The Tom Sims four-year-old age straight bourbon. David gave that to me. All he was going to do is waste it. You are talking about how beers don't have to be made of moon dust and cocoa nibs in order to be good quality beers, right? I mean, that makes them good, but they don't have to have that. Um, the more I'm drinking these and you're saying, oh, you're getting looped up, you're getting drunk, you're getting lit up because you're drinking the whiskeys. Well, I ain't getting unlit up. I mean, it's whiskey. It's 40 proof. You know, it's strong. It's a lot of alcohol. Um, and you're liking them equally and all of that. But no, I was saying that at the beginning of the video that it was sort of a draw. So uh, 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 uh. Julius at work tells me, uh, uh, is not a word. I say, you're fun. It's funny that you would challenge me on grammar when your grammar is abysmal. Um, okay. A lot of malt. Bread, bread, dough, and some grain. <clears throat> uh, I've been kind of holding back on this, you notice, because I, I keep noticing a lot of grain burn on this second sip. I'm trying to, I'm trying to like uh, stall for time because I'm trying to figure out if that's the red bush. I think it is probably. I think the one that's got more grain burn is the red bush, but I'm not confident at all. I'm a little confident, but I'm not really confident. Um, my uncles used to drink bush mills with Schmidt's beer. Oh, yeah. Ah, I was on many road trips, and look what I bought. I was on U.S. Highway 61, which actually sometimes in these live videos, you might hear cars on that highway at night when it's dark. I can look redundant, right? Well, I used to work at the office of, of redundancy office, but um, I can see the lights on 61, the vehicles going north and south. So I was on U.S. 61 in Minnesota, Minnesota, and stopped at this bar and they were not too friendly. But anyway, they, they had this bottle and I bought it. And they, I said, I want to take this bottle for my collection. He reluctantly let me have it. He, he wasn't like too thrilled about it, but I don't really know how to talk to people that live north of the Ohio River. They kind of standoffish a little bit. But um, so I, I've had this bottle since 1996, Schmitz. It's got fishing and got a guy catching a bass in the, in the lakes of Minnesota. It was really good at the bar, you know. It's probably fresh. It's right from La Crosse, obviously La Crosse, Wisconsin, Highland Brewing. So I left that place, and uh, I mean, because it was weird, because it's like there's the highway to your right is the river. You head north. There's the Mississippi River. To your left is a cliff, like literally a cliff, a bluff. Okay, let's say a bluff. It runs for a hundred miles. Well, between the highway and the bluff was this bar. It's like a red, a red um, wooden siding, you know, like red wood siding. It was just some out in the country bar tavern. But I, I drank it and then I left. But uh, he did let me have the bottle. He looked at me like strange, like, "Why do you want that bottle? Like, what are you? Are you an agent?" He was just, he, they, were, they were all very strange, but um, I didn't care. I was like, oh, I just want the bottle, you know? <laughs> and I got it. It's right there. They didn't care about me collecting bottles. Uh, okay, so I think this is the Black Bush because it doesn't have as much green burn. Cheers, sir. Craft beer pours. Oh, clinking the mugs. Cheers to you, and I hope everything goes well with your wife's medical problem. I mean, I always kind of get scared about those things and then I'll claim no I'm not scared but then you are you know like because you're wondering 
But that's human nature. Okay, all right. So um, if I look under this and it says RB, I'm going to feel funny. Because this one, I think, has more grain burn. If you taste enough whiskeys that have grain alcohol in them, you'll know that burn. It's like, it's just a harsh kind of ratchety thing. Don't say RB. Oh, how you feel played. Well, this is scary because I've done Black Bush twice and I've gotten it wrong twice. That may not be a knock against me. It may be a knock against Black Bush because it's supposed to be so much better. AJ years aged in Sherry Oloroso casks. It's so exquisite. But yet, I couldn't tell it from the other two. I couldn't dif differentiate it. Um, in defense of Bushmills, it's probably me not being able to tell one from the other too well because I don't have enough experience with the liquors, the whiskeys. However, it could be a problem where the black bush is not that great. Unfortunately, when I did all my research on YouTube, I could not find any, not a single taste challenge between red bush and the white, the black label and the red, or the red and the white. So apparently I'm, I'm the only one that did blind taste tests. So I would like to see more of those, but I, I just haven't seen them. So, uh, but anyway, no, no knock, no, no, uh, you know, no anger. I would still recommend all three. You might be able to tell one from the other, from the other, from the other. But I wasn't able to. And I can live with that because now I'm on to scotch. And I think John Barr is going to be challenging. It's going to be a problematic. I would be surprised if I got it right a majority of the time. And we're looking at about 15 different scotches. So if I do eight to seven, eight correct, seven wrong, I will expect that. If I do like 10 to five, I'll be shocked. I don't think I'm going to get it right that many times. I just think John Barr is a little bit more ordinary than, than specialized. But I could be wrong. We'll find out starting Saturday morning. John Barr, John Barr versus everybody. I'd like to find the John Barr red label. Hadn't seen it. Probably can't find it. I got the black label, which is probably on par with, well, actually it's cheaper. It's $23 a bottle. I was going to say on par with the uh, Bushmills black label, but no, it's a cheaper black label or uh, special reserve. Uh, Evan Williams black label. You've got Jack Daniels black label. Um, Heaven Hill black label. Johnny Walker black. Help me out, help me out. Um, uh, you know, all the mother black labels. <laughs> As opposed to the uh, cheaper green label, you know, usually the three year age is green. But the funny thing about Evan Williams, the green label is the one that says charcoal filtered, not the black label. And with Jim Beam, remember until three years ago, they had the Jim Beam choice, which was a green label charcoal filtered. Notice the new Jim Beam does not, the current Jim Beam does not say charcoal filtered. It's chill filtered. So, oh, I don't know. JBD says black labels matter. They do matter to some people. I don't know if they matter to me. They do matter, but I don't know how or why because I can't di differentiate them, apparently, obviously. All right. Well, anyway, enough of that Yam yammer, yammer, yammer. Um, this video went long, but I could not get it straight. I could not literally figure it out. So the final assessment, was I able to tell Bushmills original from the red, from the black, and then the black from the red? No, I was not able to do that. But if you make a video doing a taste challenge uh, blind or not blind, but I would prefer blind, I will watch. I will watch your videos. Thanks for watching this video production. Oh, well, sometimes it doesn't work out.